Hiya, today's video is about the benefits of intermittent fasting and it's not just another video about intermittent fasting. There is some really interesting new information I came across which was in the New England Journal of Medicine, I believe it was, which gives a lot of scientific basis for what we've already felt to be true about fasting. If you're new, welcome. I'm called Adrian. I make videos about alternative, natural, safe, and effective ways to improve your mental and physical health and well-being. And if you're not new, welcome back. It's really good to see you again. Now, if you've not already subscribed, please do click on the subscribe button below and the bell icon so that YouTube can keep you updated as we release new content. And in the comments section, I would love to hear from you about your experiences with intermittent fasting. I know there's a lot of you out there that have been doing it. I'm relatively new to it, but I found the results to be really, really good. So the structure of today's video, I'm going to define what intermittent fasting is. I'm going to give you a list of 22 of the health benefits and the things that happen inside your body that are very beneficial to us. And I'm also going to tell you how to get started and the way I came about this and got started. And that'll come towards the end, so do stick around until then. So what is intermittent fasting? It's controlling the time you eat to cause your body to go into a, a famine response. Fasting has long been known to have tremendous health benefits and there's various, uh, various options or various approaches to it that I've come across. Some people do 16-8 uh, which is fasting for 16 hours and eating for 8. Other people do 18-6, 18, 18 hours of fasting and 6 hours of eating which seems to have the strongest response uh, for putting your body into ketosis. There's also ones that practice one meal a day, alternative day fasting 5-2, which is five days of eating, two days of fasting. Some people fast for 24 hours, 72 hours. I've read about people going on 32-hour water fast, all sorts of different ways of approaching it. The New England Journal of Medicine uh, it is a very prestigious journal or medical journal in America, as I understand it. And they are very, very uh, precise in their approach. It has to all be scientifically proven. And fortunately, they don't seem to have too much influence, certainly from what I've read in this report from the pharmacological industry, uh, in as much as they were saying there was plenty of illnesses on here that simply there is no pill to fix. So if it's not provable, they reject it. What they talk about, which is what we want to talk about here, is getting your body into metabolic switching between feast and famine. So when you eat, your liver, your body, uses glycogen as its primary fuel source and you store fat. And you've got two types of fat. You have white fat and you have brown fat. White fat is typically like the belly fat. Brown fat is the one that has is used for uh, energy. It gives a big energy release, uh, keeps you warm, etc. When you're eating and you're eating glycogen, carbs, sugars, what's happening is your body is effectively clogging up. You're stuffing the cupboards full of this energy. When your body fasts, when you starve it of fuel, if you will, starve is probably not the right word, just fast, there's a 20-fold increase in ketosis. And basically what happens is your body starts to run on fat as its primary source of energy rather than glycogen. So think about that as a you're cleaning the cupboards out, you're cleaning the energy stores, energy stores out. And the more often you do the fasting, the easier it gets on your body to make this metabolic switch from one to the other, which is really important because it's actually how we were designed to live. The, the switch, the metabolic switch, as I understand it from the research I've done so far, starts to occur around about 12 hours. It will depend, after 12 hours of fasting, it does depend on the level of glycogen stored in your body. For some people, it could be considerably longer. And the biggest move on that average group seems to happen at around the 18 hour mark. So this metabolic switch can only occur when you fast and you have to fast for a period of time. If you're eating three times a day and consuming snacks, which is what so many of us in the West have been conditioned to do, and I really wonder why we're being conditioned to do that, of course, it would be tremendously profitable for the food companies, uh, for the drug companies, the medical companies, etc., for us to do that. So if you're consuming three times a day plus snacks, you're, you're technically, you're overeating. And, and if I upset you, I don't mean to, it's just, it, it's the way it is. Also, if you have a, a sedentary lifestyle, there is no way your body can make this metabolic switch, which means you won't get the benefits. What are the benefits of fasting? 
And when you get into the ketosis part of the fasting, so you fasted for certainly more than 12 hours, and, and I started out on the 16A and I'm now trying the 18-6 approach, what happens? Well, in the, in the New England Journal that I talked about before, um, they covered a whole bunch of things. And one of the very interesting things was that the lifespan, your lifespan can be greatly increased. Now, initially, this was thought to be part of calorie control because in a lot of research I've read over the years, calorific reduction in mammals causes a significant increase in the length of life, uh, up to 25% I've read in some studies, which is absolutely fascinating. What this journal found was that calorific restrictions certainly played a part, but a much larger part was played by the fasting and in the in the uh, research they were doing they were giving rats their daily allowance of food their daily calorific allowance um, and the rats would eat that within a four-hour period then they would be fasting for 20 hours some other really interesting things happen your body uh, regulates its glucose much better it also reduces your cellular insulin resistance which is really important your inflammation throughout your entire body is suppressed. Your resistance to body-wide stress internally and externally is increased. When you're fasting, your cells grow better, uh, they repair and their plasticity increases. And there's something called autophagy, which is really, really fascinating. Autophagy, if you break the two words down, it basically means to consume yourself or self-consume. So in your body, it's like a recycling program, Weak, dead, old, tired, redundant cells are consumed and they are replaced with new, healthy, strong cells. And this autophagy happens best and most effectively when you are fasting. Your blood pressure falls, cardiovascular disease improves, type two diabetes can have significant improvements or be eradicated completely. You can lose weight, your composition of body fat changes, the hormones related to aging are lowered and some very interesting things happen in your brain. The ketones trigger the production of BDNF molecule and that molecule is responsible for strengthening neurons and those neurons are particularly in the areas of learning and memory. So you see an improvement in learning, in spatial memory, associative memory, working memory, verbal memory and cognition. And this could have tremendous benefits for people with Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, I would think Huntington's, and also dementia. And I suspect there's going to be considerably more research done in those areas. But in some of the stuff I read, that uh, people that took the fasting approach saw improvements in these areas in as little as six weeks. And the other reason I think that's really, really important is because there are no pharmacological drugs. In other words, there are no pills you can take to improve any of those illnesses. Fasting can also help with epilepsy and there's an improvement in the expression of antioxidant defenses. You have improved and increased DNA repair, improved protein quality control, and that's really important when it comes to cancer. Mitochondrial production increases, and that's important because the mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell. So they're being replaced by a higher quantity and better quality of mitochondria. In addition, you'll see improvements in physical endurance, your balance, and your coordination. There are also very beneficial effects on asthma, multiple sclerosis, arthritis, and the body's ability to heal after surgery. So you can fast before the surgery or and after the surgery, and that will greatly enhance your ability your ability, your body's ability to repair after the surgery and really any kind of trauma. What's the best way to go about this if you just want to get started? Well, it's going to help you, I think, if you're not heavily dependent on carbs. You really want to be retraining your body to be less carb dependent and more, I think the word I saw was fat adapted, so that you're more used to burning fat as a primary source of fuel only because if you're constantly stuffing carbs and sugars down your throat all the time, you may have a sugar crash, you'll have all sorts of cravings and it's just more difficult. For me, it was considerably easier. A really good friend of mine, Dave, who runs ultra marathons and all sorts of other crazy stuff like that, um, he talked about ketosis and about how useful it was and how important it was and to become 
more dependent on eating fats uh, and proteins rather than eating carbohydrates and sugars. And I took that advice on board probably about a year back now and I made some shifts and he's absolutely right. Your energy levels become much more stable, much more level uh, and you get an overall lift in health. So if you're gonna approach the fasting thing, the more you've gone in that direction anyway, eating more and more fats and less and less carbs and sugars, the easier I think the journey would be uh, into fasting. It's certainly not really that much of a problem now uh, for me and it's still pretty early days um, in terms of the fasting thing and I, we really came about it quite by accident. I noticed that at the weekends typically we'd, we'd have dinner say Friday night, we'd finish up I don't know 7.45, 8 o'clock, sometimes a little later and it wasn't unusual for us not really to eat again until sort of 11, 11.30, 12 o'clock the next day, sometimes as late as one or two in the afternoon. And it wasn't that we were consciously starving ourselves, it's just the kind of way the day worked out. And it's only as I've become more focused on this that I realized that actually that's a great way to be. Your energy levels are much, much better. Like for example, today I'm just past, I think it's 18 hours now. Yeah, it's just coming up on 18 hours since I ate food yesterday and I'm only now starting a little hungry, getting a little hungry. The other things you can do uh, if you're finding it a little difficult, say you start off on a 16 8 or, or whatever, um, you could have some fat. So you can have a cup of coffee. If you drink coffee, put a teaspoon of butter in there. Um, not margarine, but proper butter. Or like I've done a couple of times today where I started to get a little peckish um, and I just got a spoon of coconut oil and I found that really, really good. It's all right to exercise. I was exercising on my bike like I do every day. I normally ride for about 30 to 35 minutes every morning. It's funny enough, that's where I do a lot of research as well, sat on the bike. Um, and you can drink things like teas, uh, water with a couple of drops of fresh lemon juice in it, lime juice, anything like that, apple cider vinegar. They're all absolutely fine. If you're going on a longer fast, you probably want to look at making sure you get some electrolytes as well. Um, otherwise you could run short on those. So yeah, if, and if you're gonna do this as well, it, it, it's really up to you whether you wanna kinda of go gung-ho and have this mad rush in and really concentrate and make it difficult. My view on life is different. I think life's here to be savored, to be enjoyed, to be fun. And I'm always looking for that path of least resistance. What's gonna make me feel the best? So I don't push myself into stuff and it's up to you, but it's easier because if you, if you enjoy doing it, you'll stick with it. Whereas if it's a hateful, difficult thing, my money's on the fact that you'll probably say, yeah, stuff that, it's just not worth doing. So again, find the easy way in and you will find your own path with this. Everyone's different, much as we're all the same, we're all very, very different. And what works for some might not work for others. So the idea of skipping breakfast, which is the most common approach I've come across for this, say the 16-8 or 18-6 or whatever, and, and breakfast really is breaking the fast, though it's become kind of traditionally known now as the first meal of the day. Um, by the way, I don't know if you ever thought back, we're told that it's the most important meal of the day. You ever thought back as to who said that? I bet it was some food company that had a hand in making more profits from that. I, uh, I'm actually filming this after I finished recording everything that I was just thinking it may be for some people it's gonna suit you better to do the fast ending in the morning rather than ending say in the early afternoon or mid afternoon. So you can mess around and find out what suits you the best. So in the comments section below, if you've already been intermittent fasting and either you're new to this or you've been doing it for any length of time or a long time, I'd love to hear from you as to what your experience has been, what the benefits have been for you and, and whether you plan on sticking with it. Certainly, you know, it's, as I said, it's early days for me, but I feel so much better, so much more vibrant, my head's so much clearer um, that I plan on sticking with it. If you like the video, please give me the thumbs up. I'd appreciate that. If you can think of anyone that would benefit from watching this video, please do share it with them. And you can also share it on your social media platforms. That would be very helpful to us. I look forward to hearing from you and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See ya.